Both of them are ahead. really into symbionts. So those are organisms that have a symbiotic relationship with microbes and do experiments uh, up in the lab that are difficult to do down in situ on the seafloor. Awesome. You want to feather up the altitude there, so you don't. Viewers asking, are these manganese nodules we're seeing right now, Adam? Yeah, they are. Nice job. These are these tiny nodules that, some places we've seen, kind of merge together into a manganese pavement. Yep, upslope, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is trainer. Viewers asking how long we stay down on a typical dive, and on this expedition, our dives have been about 24 hours, plus or minus, more plus than minus. And our limiting factor is how much storage space we have for the s samples. Randy, where are we in a ship move? We've been moving along, um, so we're about halfway through another ship move. Uh, never really stopped. If we get far enough ahead, can we try for a push core in this? Yep. Viewers asking why they're not seeing it. Yeah, just get out ahead. I think you'll be able to. I can stop. The yeah, ship they now. want to push core. Bridge now. Hold position. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think with that holding position and. Yeah, I just don't. Like Jess was saying, I think that the terrain up there might not have what we want. So if okay. we want to do it, we'll do it here. Perfect. Um, and you're far enough ahead, I think, if you just go to the right a bit, try to line up. All right, yeah. Let's see if we can quickly get one. Yeah. Starting to come into that terrain in, in Argus ahead, yeah. so. Don't push down here. Yep. Looks like Jake set up the cameras for you. Yeah, Jake's on it. Thank you. Thanks, Jake. Oh yeah, nice. Wow, 40 meg, very nice. Go ahead. Are there any, is there anything floating in these bins here? Um, not that I was warned of. Roger. And I'm assuming there's been no push cores that have been taken? No push cores taken. All right, go ahead and pop on out there, Jake. Although that first one is a bit dirty, right? Maybe we can start with the second one. 
You want me to wash it out, or do you want me to go for the second one? Go for the second one, if you don't mind. Roger that. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, I went down with four. Oh. Sorry, my jaw did not lock. Argus might pass over, but I'm watching the uh, sonar, so should be fine. Still a little jumpy, hey? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you want to be on the kill switch there, Drakey? Yep. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please, Dave. That's great. If you guys see it start to jostle around a lot, we're having some arm issues. That is shallow. Uh, it's moving a little bit. And as far as it goes in. Yeah, really? All right. Uh, oh, wait, please. For another spot. I would say keep that in there and do kind of a triple poke, you know, and see if you could fill it up that way. Are you saying to double stack these guys? Yeah. Roger. Ooh, let's triple poke it here. <laughs> <laughs> Never done a push core this way. So you're looking for a material, not stratigraphy or anything? Yeah, well, with uh, yeah, just a few centimeters, the stratigraphy is not going to be good, so I'm just looking for material now. Yeah. All right, that's as far as that one goes in there. Ooh, oh, yeah. Nope. Those nodules really disrupt the seal. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty thin here, too, guys. Let's see if we get any. You want a fourth one or three? Yeah, fourth. There's room for one more. All right, stack it up. <laughs> <laughs> Quad whopper. Yeah, it's just falling out like as soon as you pick it up. All right, we'll see if it makes it. If not, that's fine. Do one more for you there. Oh, that is, that is hard rock there. All right, full wide there, please. All right, here's the hoping, guys. Doesn't help that the arm's touching yeah, and like yeah, the arm pushing down shaking too. it all out. It doesn't help. Let's see if we got any. Somewhere in that storm cloud. Nice. So one, 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 nine. Ready? Anything. One, one, nine. Yep. Got a Don't line tap for now. Somewhere around here. Yeah. Adam, I'd be really surprised if you got anything left in this guy. Considering I can't see the quiver. <laughs> well, it's worth a try. This is push core two. This is push core one, I think. There's no numbers. I just said second most forward. Okay. I think I see the lip is Blue like tape. a little bit over. A little off. Yeah, just a little. Come up a little bit. It's hard to tell, though. I don't know. Yeah. 
Just leave that notation up to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's a. I feel like I should be there. I think you're On too too point. close to the bin. Almost there. This is not the best fish core I've ever done. Wait, maybe there's material in the quiver. Yeah, yeah, what's what's the bottom of the quiver? It's a plug. So nice. Uh, it comes out, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Well have to do that one in your blind. See, see if it wants to tap down or if it's got a nodule block in it. Yeah. Oh, that's down. Put that one down for a maybe. <laughs> <laughs> if you get one nodule out of that, I'd be really surprised. Um, what else do you want to do here, Adam? Uh, <laughs> move away from here. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. Were you after the sediment, too, or just the nodules in that? I really just wanted the nodules, but I do not want to scoop anything. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to use our, our jaws as a paddle? And, um, just kidding. Not no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what you're saying, but I don't think that I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Raj. Well, that okay, I'm going to just call a movement. Roger. Bridge, Nav. Uh, step 100 meters, bearing 015. Thank you. All right, we'll need to zoom out ahead. Raj. But Argus is pretty settled where it is. Looking like we're going to dump to the ridge now again. What's that? Uh, I'm just curious what the rest of that topography is going to be. No, but usually at this result.
have a question from a viewer about um, are there opportunities for people who are not studying marine biology to experience this? Definitely check out our website. We have internships and not all of them are biology based. We have mapping, seafloor mapping internships. We have college students who are interning as data loggers. We have uh, videographers. I believe two of our three videographers on the ship right now got their start as interns on the ship. We also have positions uh, for guest science communication fellows. That's the role that I am fulfilling. You can find out more by checking I out our website. Adam, we have a viewer asking if you ever find any valuable metals. Well, they're saying like gold in the seamounts, but maybe you could talk about the other valuable metals. Yeah, so uh, we don't find kind of like nuggets of gold or anything like that, but the manganese crust that's coating these rocks contain uh, rare metals that are really important for kind of... Uh, battery technology, computers, electric cars, wind turbines, metals like cobalt and yttrium, and they're concentrated in these these crusts. So if you bring up these crusts and, and you can pull out those metals, then it's actually a good source for those. Uh, there's some interest in actually mining the, those metals from the seafloor. Uh, one of the reasons we're out here is to understand how those metals are distributed, what controls their deposition, and what are the ecosystems that Go up a bit live thick. on them so that if there is ever uh, a need to mine them, we can do so kind of with as much knowledge as possible to do it sustainably and with minimal impact. In other settings where you have <coughs> hydrothermal vents, you can also get concentrations of copper and gold and silver again not as nuggets but as you know distributed material throughout the the deposits around hydrothermal vents in fact some of the large uh mines on land are uh old hydrothermal vents that have been abducted and uh so there's also interest in mining those from the seafloor as well but again really need to think hard about how to do that uh, sustainably and, and efficiently with minimal impact. Yeah, we're just waiting for Argus to catch up. Sarah's in charge. <laughs> Sarah's in charge.
One of our viewers is asking why we don't have some storage room on Argus. And I would guess that's because Argus does not collect samples. Argus is just video and camera. Yeah, sometimes we put an elevator down um, to kind of load up another another uh, platform. But, um, but Argus would be heaving too much and we wouldn't want to tangle Hercules up with Argus in order to get the samples onto Argus. But the elevator we can drop down. Um, it's not connected anymore. It's just a platform with a lot of weights on it and some floats. And then uh, we load it up with samples and then we would release the weights and the floats would bring it to the surface. Cool. Hey, Randy, can you uh, zoom me out on high pack a little bit? Yep. Okay. So we are between waypoint eight and nine. We're on this flat slope here, and you probably want to see the end, don't you? No, no, that, I just want to see if we're going to get past waypoint nine. Yeah. So we have, we've been moving this whole time except for the push core. Okay. Um, so constant ship speed, point two. One of our viewers is asking if there are any target species we're looking for. We do have some requests from biologists who are collaborating with other scientists on our ship. So we kind of have a wish list from them. And we're also documenting the biodiversity as we move across the transects. Uh, it looks like Argus is flattening out up here. So it's just kind of that one blocky tailless bit or At least at the bottom it was. This is looking a bit more flowy. <laughs> Solid. <laughs> Okay, and for the viewer who's asking about waking up under the ocean, remember there's no there are no people in the ROVs. We are all up on the ship, and that's why we call them remotely operated vehicles, because we don't have to put any people in them. But it is kind of, it was a little bit of a, a nice. new experience to wake up and to sleep on a ship for me. A lot of rocking and rolling the first night. And left. Yeah. If you want another screen, you can take a glance at that and see your quick positioning there. Yeah. All right, so Argus is moving, so we're going to need to go back over to where Argus is and get out in front. There you go. So if you lift off there and drive straight ahead, you'll do it. There you go. And then if you drive forward at that heading, once you've got that clearance. Yeah. There you go. 
Drive straight ahead there. One of our viewers is asking if Argus gets moved by the ship or has a pilot, and Argus does have a pilot. Front row. That is me. That's Jake. Give it the beans. There you go. All right, now change your heading to the right. Maybe like 90 degrees to the right. Up, oh. Mike. And then. What'd you say? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Drive forward up the slope. And you'll want to feather your altitude up as you go. There you go. A bit more to the right, or sorry, turn your yeah, turn your heading to the right and drive straight. Just do the lights. Uh, getting back in the box. Yeah. Doing great. Yeah, because you're just imaginary. You're just somewhere out of the. Yeah. Yeah, keep driving ahead and you'll be back in. There you go, back in the box. <laughs> yeah. Awesome job. Hey, Dave, a question for you, if you're available. Yeah, go ahead. Do you know, are these dives, the videos posted in full somewhere, or is it just highlights? On our website, uh, just highlights. Uh, and you get all the good stuff and uh, not the boring stuff. Uh, <clears throat> for researchers, the uh, videos are uh, archived, uh, and I don't remember exactly where. So, Rennie, we're getting closer to the um, target depth for a rock. Yeah, Roger. So that I don't know I, if 100 meters will be good. Yeah, I have the um, I have the target dropped around what what depth it should be at, and which oh, was okay. it? Two three what? Two three twenty. Two three twenty. Yeah. So we've got just about fifty. Yeah, fifty. Five contours. Five ten okay. meter contours. There. Awesome. Thanks. Um, so let me call in another ship move there. Bridge nav. Uh, one hundred meters zero one five. Thank you. Rennie, could you, could you take a question? Sure thing. Uh, one of our viewers is probably looking at our more data and asking what causes the spikes in pitch? Is it the way the motors are used or tugging on the cable? 
uh, spikes in pitch. I'm presuming that that is uh, the ship pitch, actually, because I don't think we re report the um, the vehicle uh, pitch roll. Uh, so the as far as the ship goes with the spikes, um, probably if you looked at the scale on the right or the left, I'm not sure where it's reported, you'd see that it's actually not really too much of a uh, big spike, a couple degrees, something like that. Where, which one would be, would have that information? So I can take a look at what they're looking at. Nav data, I think, yeah. Yeah, it's actually, it's pretty minor. Just the scale, it's only a few degrees. I don't think we have vehicle pitch roll up because it's pretty steady. Ooh, and that goes back to another question someone asked a while ago. Scroll down and find it. How do we keep the buoyancy neutral when collecting samples and therefore increasing the weight of HERC? That would be the metal plates, right? Uh, yeah, we, ad we adjust, um, one thing we do is we adjust our Z-bias, which is uh, our, we have a constant thrust uh, upwards, oh wait, upwards, yeah, to keep us down because we're positively buoyant. So when we pick up a sample that changes our buoyancy a little bit, so we'll adjust our Z-bias to increase that thrust, um, but sometimes if we can't adjust it enough, then we'll have to drop a plate to account for that extra buoyancy or extra weight. Great. And those plates will break down over time, correct? Yeah, they corrode. Steel and hemp. Steel. Yep. If we even if we bring uh, plates up, back up in between dives, say we don't drop all of them, you'll see the corrosion already beginning, mm -hmm. and it's quite significant compared to the brand new plates that we have on the on the ship. On our science channel, I'm seeing that we post the the full dives are posted on the Nautilus YouTube channel main page. Okay, good to know. I didn't know that. Viewers asking if there's much water current right here in this area. No, we're not actually feeling much current at all. We're moving along pretty steady. Probably why all these rocks are pretty covered in sediment, I'd imagine. How can you sense that while you're piloting? Um, amount of thrust that you have to do to counteract it. Yeah, so right now it's we're able to float along pretty well and just use our thrusters to go whatever which way we want. But if we get a high current area, you like to turn up the, the amount of gains you have on your control. So if you push the stick so much forward, how much thrust will be the equivalent of it? Um, and we'll usually thrust full thrust in one direction to counteract current if it's really strong. Cool. That ties to another question. What is powering the ROV? Yeah, so the ROV, we send power down from the ship. Um, so we have that long 6-8 cable connect to Argus, which goes through the tether connected to Herc. Um, so we get all of our power from the ship. And then on board uh, Hercules, we have a motor that's basically spinning up um, the hydraulic pressure to kind of the system pressure, which is about 3,000 PSI. So we have kind of the electric side, but then also uh, all of our thrusters and most of our functions are based on hydraulic pressure. Interesting. Oops.
a little stock crinoid. Looks, Looks like, like it. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Renny, you owe me a soda, Jinx. Uh, uh. <laughs> Take a look. Yep. It's looking like a crinoid. There's coral in front of the porch there. Get him push on in there, please. Yep. Verified crinoid. Yeah, Sarah, you can see an Argus sonar. It's pretty flat out ahead, so to get to our target depth, we gotta keep going a bit. Sounds good. Thank you. Go wide there, please. Sure. Probably getting to be a decision time whether we go straight up that knoll or over to waypoint nine, huh? Yeah. Over to waypoint nine would be pretty flat until we get to this possible wall. You said there may be an artifact there in the in the mapping data. Yeah. Was it? It's it's more visible in the yeah in the actual. It still looks like it'll be. You know, in order to get from A to B, there will be some slope. Yeah. Whether or not it's a wall. So well, let's keep let's keep on the path. Nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Um, so we'll go. Yeah, I'll just keep going up to our our target depth for the rock sample. Yeah, that's good. Then we can and then we'll go along contour there for a little bit. Sure. Afterwards. That crinoid was Bathycrinidae. Bathycrinidae? We have a viewer asking if the seamounts have been dated. That's actually one of the goals of the expedition. Yeah, no one has ever visited the seamounts before, so there's never been samples that were available for dating. We have a question asking, so basically a dive could go as long as the ship has power and fuel. And I think most of our dives, because we're collecting samples, will be limited by the space for those samples. The longest dive has been, is it 72 hours for the Nautilus? Somewhere yeah, around, yeah, a couple, couple dives we've done that have been that long. 72, 75. But those, um, we weren't collecting samples on those dives. So we weren't bound by that. And uh, we were doing some tasks, and we still had more more tasks at the seafloor. So we just kept going. ROV pilots, could you take a question? Yeah, sure. let's do it. Do you think utilizing a virtual reality headset would make piloting easier? I've heard it makes you seasick a bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's definitely, you know, even when you're on land and you use virtual reality headset, it's very disorienting. And when you add that to sea and all the extra motions that you have and uh, lack of spatial awareness, it can be quite disorienting. But uh, I think a couple organizations have tried it. And uh, there's been some cool, cool uses for it, especially for like streaming to shore and uh, having uh listeners feel like they're actually like like present uh -huh. on the seafloor so cool. there's definitely uses for it yeah neat crinoid on top of a little hole little cave All right, full wide there, please. Thanks, Dave.
Rennie, do you have any idea of how much area you covered in the 72-hour dive? Um, we were not aiming to cover a lot of area. Um, so we were actually, I think that was at the main Endeavour vent field um, for Ocean Networks Canada, probably both times. Um, so we were in a small area, but we were maintaining um, some of the equipment, uh, scientific equipment that's down there on the cable network array. Um, so kind of staying in in a within a within a box and kind of servicing different bits, mm -hmm. moving stuff around, plugging stuff in, um, replacing sensors, etc. But um, yeah, so you can get a sense of how much linear distance we can cover if we go in a straight line um, based on our speed. So exploration speed is like 0.2 or 0.3 knots. We have enough time to kind of look around, um, but still uh, catch up with the ship if we need to. If we're doing a, a strict transect, uh, we can go about half a knot. Uh, with no stopping. We wouldn't really want to go too much faster than that because terrain, although we have multi-beam bathymetry, um, there's, it's only at a certain resolution. And so there's finer, there's finer features that are not resolved within that. Like essentially you could run into a wall and you're going, you wouldn't want to be going a knot and encounter a wall because you can't, um, p uh, part of the disadvantage of a two body system is uh, we can't just fly Hercules away and avoid the wall. Uh, Argus will still slam into it. So we don't want to get into a position where we can't winch up fast enough on Argus. We do have our scanning sonars, which give us an idea of um, about 100 meters out. But sometimes, depending on how steep that wall is and how tall it is, we wouldn't have enough time if we're going too fast. Um, so yeah, you can probably pretty easily calculate online how, how many kilometers you can cover in a 24, uh, 48 hour dive based on those parameters. All right, go ahead and push on in there, please, Dave. Like they're all the three the same, yeah? This looks like those little tube worms that we had with hydrozoa on them. Oh yeah. yeah. One yeah. of them was collected on... Oh, okay. One watch. It's a little siphon out there or something. Yeah. Kind of. It's very hairy. Yeah, I think that I think that's hydrozoa attached yeah. to it. Oh, Raj. All right, full light there, please, Dave. Adam, could you um, answer a viewer's question about the sediment? What's the composition of the sediment? And if it's biogenic, can you tell the age from microfossils? And what is the oldest sediment? Yeah, those are great questions. So it is biogenic. It's made up of uh, you know, the tests and shells of, of dead animals that float down from above. Um, absolutely, you could look at the microfossils to try and get ages, or you could carbon date the sediment or the, the shells to get ages. Uh, we have not done any of that, but we have collected a couple push cores that, uh, that we could do that with. Um, it's not really the target uh, for the science that, that we're interested in, because uh, you know, we think these seamounts are, are quite old. Uh, and the sediment on here very likely is uh, is uh, you know collects and, and gets scoured away and then collects again. So uh, it'd be a complicated history to work out.
It's like one little ridge here. It's all broken up and fractured. We have a question about the max depth for Hercules, and that is 4,000 meters, over 13,000 feet. Dave, can you talk about the video resolution on Herc's cameras? Sure. Uh, the main Herc camera that you're watching on uh, Sat Feed 1 uh, is an HD camera, 1920 by 1080. And uh, it's a, a broadcast. Uh, uh, it's made by Insight, Insight Pacific, which makes underwater cameras. Uh, it's a uh, broadcast quality three chip uh, standard broadcast camera uh, with a standard broadcast lens on it, about a 17 by 1 uh, zoom. And that's about it. It's HD. Uh, we are 4K capable, uh, and we have a 4K camera that we don't have installed right now. Um, for general purpose stuff, the HD camera has uh, plenty of resolution and a, and a nice zoom capability. Does the 4K not have a zoom as good? It, it does have a zoom. It's not as good. Oh. Is there a, a, a spec reason for that? Um, it's uh, the 4K uh, technology is still evolving as far as undersea yeah. is uh, is concerned, and uh, so this is one of the uh, first generation 4K cameras. Uh, and while it does good in certain circumstance, uh, it doesn't do as well in other circumstances. Just depends on the, on the use case. But not that's not necessarily a limitation with it. All 4K cameras. Uh, no, like no, and and uh, right, and uh, and three chip uh, 4K cameras for underwater use are being developed. See that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I saw that. I'm gonna wanna look at. We're moving left, so it'd be there is. Yeah, yeah, see it. You see it over, over, yeah. over there. There's no. How's the how's the gauges? I mean, it's only like it's all tiny bits, right? It's not. Yeah. Okay. Just keep an eye on it. Pass yep. along. I'll note it. Hi, Bradley. We have a question from Bradley asking what we're looking for, and we are surveying never explored seamounts on this expedition. We're currently surveying seamount B. We're sampling rocks and some biological specimens to better understand this area and this ecosystem. You can read more about our expedition if you go to our webpage, nautiluslive.org. Are we going to go? Oops, sorry. Oh,
that look like a critter to you, or is that just a shadow? You want to push on in there, please? I think it's a shadow. In the foreground? Yeah, uh, definitely a shadow. Never mind, full wide. <laughs> that was a sea cucumber. Starting to see things, guys. <laughs> So, Sarah, I think we'll get down to uh, 2330, or up to, to, up to 2330. Sorry, uh, that I, was directed at me. I missed it. Yeah, I think we'll get up to 2330 at the end of the ship move, <clears throat> somewhere around there. Okay, she had, um, what she has written down is 2330, and then she asked me to go shallower than that. Okay. How much shallower? Um, by 10 to 15 meters. That's what she said. Okay, we'll see what we can do. Because uh, the next move is kind of a long contour. Okay. So um, we can just bump up a little higher. Yeah, okay. Um, on this slope here. And Sounds then, good. Yeah. But we're still, still going, still moving. Raj. Moving the whole time. So uh, we're getting up on that depth now? Yeah, they so want to go like a little shallower. So the end of this move is probably 2330. Perfect. And it's, it's, I think Corley indicated possibly a bit shallower. Yeah, we're going to go shallower than that. So we're going to push for it up a little bit, get something a little bit shallower, and then. Oh, and then way. go a long contour. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll head up here and then. Yeah, it'll be interesting. We could end up in stuff that's a little hard to sample. This looks like it. it's okay if we could grab one of those plates, but uh, we'll have to see where we stop. Yeah, I'll probably just go north a bit, maybe. Yep. Oh, yeah, something like that. 015 is what we've been doing. It's not 365, not, Roger. It's not <laughs> too off of north. 365. Purple. Back crinoid. Crinoid, yeah. yeah. Try to push on in a bit, please, there, Dave. Come a little wide there, Dave. Let's get there. You can push in a little tighter there if you want, Dave. Has a good grip on that. Yeah. Velcro. Velcro, for sure. Adhesion. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Steve is waiting for you, Rennie, to call oh, out there. those huge intertentacular sclerites. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Inter intertentacular sclerites? Yes. <laughs> I think that was our old watch name for a yeah. little bit. <laughs> Last expedition? Yeah. I think <laughs> I failed the midterm then. Yep. <laughs> A viewer is asking if it's possible to age the stemmed coral, and I believe we can using the skeleton, correct? 
Not easily, I don't think. But more so than the sponges, right? Yes. It's just what I've heard. <laughs> it's much easier to, to date when a coral dies rather than how old it is. Jess or Jake, could you answer a couple of Hercules questions? Yep. One viewer asks, is Herc neutrally buoyant or just slightly positive? Slightly positive buoyant. Go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Looks like there's a parasite on the side. Another parasite, yeah. Oh. Chasing a fish that doesn't want to get caught. <laughs> All right, full wide, please. And then also, is there a sensor on the bottom of Herc to let you know when you're about to touch down, or is it all by feel? There's a, um, we have a DVO, so a Doppler velocity logger, on uh, the back starboard side of the vehicle. So it's like on the back corner. I mean, you kind of see it in the Argus cam actually right now. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, we use that as uh, an altitude measurement on Hercules, and uh, it's a good gauge for telling how close we are to the seafloor. It kind of gets a little bit difficult when we're going up slope because the sensor's on the back of the vehicle. So um, you kind of got to judge based on um, how steep the slope is, whether your porch, whether our front of the vehicle is approaching the sediment. And we use visual cues as well with the cameras. Shadows. Shadows. Kind of interesting. There's two different trails here. Yeah. Dave, you want to do a partial zoom on these two trails, please? Kind of wonder if the trail patterns depend on the slope. Like, if it's steeply sloping, do they extend more downhill? Hmm. Oh. That's a good question. Do we have our lasers on? Oh, I can turn them on. So Thank one you. of them was dancing and one of them was that. Was it spastic snail? Yeah. <laughs> Acrobat? Oh, <it's> spastic. <laughs> so it certainly does look like two different organisms. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Very cool. Full wide, please. Viewers asking, is there any plankton at these depths? 